What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we are back with the long-awaited, highly anticipated 2024 full room and office tour for the YouTube channel, man. Really excited for this. This is a video that I do every single year, and I know it is a little bit late. I usually upload it on New Year's Day every single year, but this year I did have to wait because we had to build this office. I don't know if you guys remember, but this entire room was pretty much covered in boxes. It was ridiculous, but today we're going to break down the entire room tour, showcase everything in here, man, go through all the figures individually, and just showcase every single detail of the office and room tour. A lot of work been done in here. Me and my dad went hard in here and did a lot of things to get this thing ready, man. So I hope you guys are excited for it. Let's buckle the hell up. What we're going to do is come through the door, and I'm just going to go around the entire room. We'll start on this wall, and we'll just go all the way around until we complete completely go through the complete office, man. But I appreciate each and every one of you guys, but let's shut the hell up and get started. All right, man, so as we come through the door right here into the office and we turn around and shut the door, the first thing that is on the door here is this old uh, Elite Collection poster, pretty much. And then around the door there, I did, I went ahead and put my like San Diego Comic-Con badge. I have like some different badges from different events and things of that nature. So I just have this Elite Collection poster. I'd like to get it a brand new one, but I, I you know, I haven't really seen another one. So we'll, uh, we'll see about that. But uh, I guess before we get into this wall right here and those figures, we will start out on the accent wall. And the accent wall is awesome. It's got like this two-tone pink zebra print, obviously. So I just kind of wanted to, I don't know, spice the room up a little bit. So instead of just the traditional, you know, white or gray walls that we have here, I wanted to uh, spice things a little bit up there. So we do have like the LED strips going along the wall there. And then it goes, you know, around the door frame. And then it also, you know, has the, the pink zebra print sort of two-tone on there. But let's get into it. Right here we have this old like blanket flag sort of deal that I got for Christmas a few years ago. But I figured it... It's a nice wall space behind the door. Nothing too crazy there. But we also have my Universal Championship here that does have the Finn Balor side plates on it hanging right here. We have a few different replica championships, which we'll get into. But this is the first one listed, you know, on the wall right here. Also right here, we do have this can of spray paint. Now, I am going to use this for the arena, which we'll get into later on. But uh, that's why that is sitting there. Then we have my different remotes. Now, this right here is one of the bigger features of the room. This room did not have this lighting initially, but I have added a lot of lights here. So we have all these different can lights going all the way around. And then we have the center one that does have the LED, like blue lighting or whatever going around it. And you can actually change the color of this to different colors if you want to. It also does, yeah, it does like different colors and things like that, which I thought was awesome. But then you also have the these control the LEDs that are stripping across the room here. And this remote actually controls the lights over there. So, you know, you can like hit it and change the different colors there. So I thought that was awesome as well. Now, besides the remotes, this is a bunch of different things. You have weapons storage here. You have all of the championships. You have cloth goods in here, you know, different things like that. And at the bottom, I think it's just figure stands and things of that nature. Down here, we do have a, a shipment from Ringside Collectibles. Use code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% over there. Always appreciate them. Right here, we do have my working desk. Now, of course, we do have Diet Doozy as always, but this is where my... Uh, so, I, I have not gotten the uh, Ethernet cable hooked up just yet, so I don't have my full like office computer set up right here. But I am going to have the dual monitor set up with the PS5 or whatnot, but right here... We do have just some different figures that did not fit on shelves, so I wanted to make sure that these guys made it in. You have like these little orb figures or something like that, or what are they called, domes I think they were, but we have some different characters there, and then we just have this sort of spice rack with some different figures here. You have Samoa Joe, Drew McIntyre, Razor Ramon slash Scott Hall, we have Mick Foley and Mankind, and then we have Daniel Bryan as well. Just some different characters that didn't make it onto the shelves, but I wanted to make sure that these guys got represented, so I did put them here on the desk for now. This is kind of a temporary setup. I don't know where they'll go after we put the computers in, but I guess we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Right here, we have some different things, and also throughout the room, you may notice some Easter eggs. There are some Easter eggs planted across the room. You guys can let me know if you can spot them or let me know down in the comment section or what have you, but we do have my kind of like updated the way the greatest hit Seth Rollins should have been. We have that figure right there that's on the new formula. And then we have some random superstars figures, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Bray Wyatt. You get the point there. So those are just my kind of loose superstars figures that I have there. To the left of these roster shelves right here, 
We also have my WWF Championship, which looks really beautiful here. One of my favorite titles as a kid. Sort of the championship of my childhood going up into the, uh, you know, just kind of when my when my fandom started, this was the championship that was represented. But we do have all, you know, real replica, adult, you know, replica championships hanging around. You got the Universal title over there. And we have the other two championships here. You got World Heavyweight Championship over here as well. And it is autographed by Edge, which is cool. So we have the big gold representative there, which we'll get into that. But let's get into these shelves first. We do have the MDT pick fed roster shelves had to bring these back they were a staple of the old room so i figured we'd bring them back right here and you guys will notice on the mdt live shelf we have this 3d printed mdt logo to sit right there and then for the vindication shelf we have a vindication logo printed so i thought that was a pretty cool little uh i don't, I don't know i just think that's a really clean thing so it represents the full roster there but taking you guys through the roster shelves here showing off the champions you do have roman reigns you got the usos and whatnot with their championships just different figures represented here. And again, these are just roster shelves. You got their championships and all the different things going on. Some of these figures do need to be updated and changed around, but this is just uh, a look at, at the different rosters and things and what have you. So you can have a look there. I think, you know, everything turned out clean. I want to say a couple people are missing from the rosters, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. And finally, we, of course, we did replace our custom Eric Bischoff with the actual Ruthless Aggression Bischoff right there, which is cool. And then from the MDT Live rosters, we do go up to the Vindication roster here with the champions. You got Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, Cody Rhodes, and the new Elite 104 AJ Styles fix up. We have Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt Colt represented right there. We also have other superstars represented as well. Orange Cassidy, we have El Generico. We got Adam Hangman Page, and then, you know, just going all the way through. And then we have Kane and Braun Strowman at the end there with the custom mask. So there's our roster shelves. And then if we bump it up one, we do have the suited figure shelf, which is actually a new thing. Now, those two Trash Corbins right there, one of those is going to be, or actually both of those are going to be used on surgery. I really don't care for a Trash Corbin in suit. But uh, this is a new addition. We've never done this before, but it is all suited bodies. So we just have a bunch of suited figures right here. Some of them kind of make no sense, and some of them I low-key wish were on their respective superstar shelves, such as Triple H and whatnot. But, yeah, it's still cool to, you know, put these up here and have all these figures represented in suit form. I thought it'd make for a cool look. So we have all these different suited bodies. And I don't have all of them. I know I'm missing Booker T. I'm missing the GM or Commissioner Shawn Michaels and some others, but it's still a cool shelf to look at. And now we're going to go up to the top shelf and take a look at these figures. So at the top here, we do have just a, a kind of a random assortment. You will see some Ultimate Editions and just some random Legends figures. I typically try to use flashback figures up here, but you may see, you know, one or two, you know, just wild horses up here. It's just some craziness. We do have my armless British Bulldog right there, which I need to get updated, but yeah, again, it's just a bunch of random figures up here that didn't really have a specific shelf. I try to keep superstars together when there's multiple releases, but sometimes that's not the case. But we have the DX Army together, and then we go on down. Just, again, random figures and, and what have you there, like that custom Crispin Wild. We got the Dudleys. Got some Jake the Snakes. Rick Rude, Zeus. You got the Gobbledy Gooker, which, uh, low-key, hot take. That may be an overrated figure right there, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Definitely a unique, cool release, but I don't know. I, I don't like the way it moves around. But then we ended up with Doink the Clown, Terry Funk. We got Ric Flair, Muhammad Ali, and George the Animal Steel. So we come down from there and this completed wall, we pretty much have everything accomplished except for this corner over here, which a lot of stuff going on in this corner. Like we said, we do have the big gold world heavyweight championship here autographed by Edge. And then in this corner, we kind of have some Ziggler stuff going on. So this is my ring worn Hell in a Cell 2015 hoodie by Dolph Ziggler. It's autographed there and it's all framed up nice. And then uh, on this side, we do have the Steel in the Show cash in plaque from 2013. So we do have... Dolph Ziggler, it's autographed there when he cashed in and won the World Heavyweight Championship. And I felt like that kind of went good with the big gold right here. So I felt like that was needed. And then we also have this Stealing the Show surfboard wooden thing I had made in Cosmel. I think it was in 2017 when I went on a cruise when I got married. So I thought that was a cool little piece. And that's a little sentimental gift there from that cruise. And then at the top, we do have my Dolph Ziggler collection. So over here, we just have some different Zigglers. You got some different cloth goods and whatnot. We got some MDT Zigglers up here. Some random ones going on, man. Such good figures, man. Then you have all these customs here from Showstopper Custom Figs. Some different gears we've never seen uh, going on and on and on. And then they go all the way back. I try to keep them in timeline order. Sometimes they are not in order, but I try my best to keep them in timeline order. But yeah, there's the Dolph Ziggler. So Dolph Ziggler has his own little cool section over here. I'm a big fan of Dolph Ziggler. So yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe one company's got to pick him up so we can get some more action figures of him. So if we come down from there onto this corner shelf, we do have the uh, the Founding Fathers faction right here. You have George Washington, 
Teddy Roosevelt and Abe Lincoln. Now, I know not all of these are founding fathers, but it is just the uh, the old faction from uh, 2K back in the day. And so I do have them represented in figure form here, which I thought was really funny. So we do have Abe Lincoln here holding the American flag, and just I thought they looked cool in figure form. Pretty toyetic guys. And then we have these loyal subject figures, which I really like. You got just an assortment here that I thought really, I don't know, just kind of completed the shelf because they're, they're shorter than those guys. So I don't know, I just felt like they fit. Then we have the uh, pink lights going off right here. We have the YouTube plaque here for 100K subscribers. Got the presented to My Damn Toys there. Huge shout out to all of you guys that made that possible. So we do have the YouTube plaque there. That was a long goal of mine early on when we started the YouTube channel. And then we also have uh, my figure and my wife's figure right here. So just have them displayed together here, of course, in my ring gear with my jersey. And then we do have uh, the YouTube sort of gear here where I tag teamed with uh, Stage Creator. Shout out to my boy there. So we do have my YouTube gear there. Need another head sculpt there, but I never got my Diet Dew gear. I think it ended up going on eBay or something like that. So if somebody watching this video has that Diet Dew MDT Custom Elite figure in that gear from GCW, I'd like to I'd like to purchase that if I if I could do that. We do have the custom YouTube gear there, and then we have the Alley Katniss Memorial Battle Royal Trophy that will be defended sometime this year. Love that custom trophy. Huge shout out to Alley Cat. Rest in peace to the legend. And then we have like a little wood grain, little wood piece here, MDT by my brother. Then we have Cena. We have a little Roman Reigns gauntlet here that I haven't made into a custom yet. I don't think I've ever shown that on the on the channel before. And we have some old looks of some old championships. We have the MDT Battle Royal Championship, which should be defended a few times this year for sure. We have the MDT Championship. And then we have the Elite Championship. And then we have a little Millennium Puzzle. And my WrestleMania floor band from this past year's WrestleMania where I sat on the floor for night two of WrestleMania 39. We go down from this shelf down to this one. This is sort of my like Cena dedicated shelf. Just some miscellaneous figures and whatnot from some fans that have sent me stuff. And then just some old Jax figures. We got a ring giant. Then if we come up here, we do have my ring worn actually caught in person. I actually caught this at a live event. It was, uh, I want to say it was a Friday night Smackdown. I think Cena was in the dark match, I do believe. And after the match, he threw it into the crowd and I actually caught it, which I thought was awesome because you guys know that Cena is my favorite wrestler of all time. So that was awesome. And then back here, I, I'm, I don't drink. I've never drank alcohol, but I do have this old can that has John Cena's face cut out of it. And it makes a nice like ring lantern, which is really, really awesome. And a huge shout out to my man, Brad. Actually, his name is Brad that made that. Huge shout out to you, buddy. So there's a little Cena shelf. And down here, we do have a huge shout-out to my man, Michael, for the custom MDT Jason mask. Jason has played a, played a part in my life, so he made me my own custom Voorhees Jason mask in the MDT colors, which looks really sweet. And then we have my favorite current NBA player, which is Luka Doncic. Kobe Bryant's my favorite of all time, but we do have Luka here representing the starting lineups. And then we have one of my favorite video game series of all time with Hitman. So we have Agent 47 here. I think it's like a play arts figure. And then I actually made him this custom briefcase and these custom silver ballers for the figure there so that looks awesome and then at the bottom we do have a uh, john cena book and lunch box just because it i don't know it kind of completes the shelf i didn't want it to be empty all right so that is my little corner shelf over here and then we have this little uh sort of fan mail shelf this is just a bunch of miscellaneous figures that fans have sent me over the years and stuff and i like to have these represented on the zebra shelf so, so huge shout out to everyone that has sent in mail man i appreciate each and every one of you guys so obviously this isn't everything and i couldn't fit everything but uh this is just a little mini shelf of different things represented we got some funko pops and custom punisher rollins made out of the custom we made on the channel and just some different things going on so i appreciate each and every one of you and then we have a little uh a little dom head sculpt right there shout out to him then over here to uh, sort of complete the look here, I guess, we have the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Brody Lee from last year. Not this, not 2023, but 2022, I think it was. And the only reason that's there is because we do have the other one uh, over here, which we'll get into. But up top, we do have this like first edition copy of, uh, I think it's the first print AEW trading cards that I had framed here. It's just the upper deck card sort of print it all together there. I don't know the full lore behind that, but I have that framed. And then we just have some miscellaneous figures on display. Something that you really didn't see in the old office is, is figures kind of posed around and displayed, but we do have some Darby Allens over here all together, which are cool. And then we do have the Defining Moments Sting. And then we have the Ultimate Edition Custom Sting that I had made because I'm a huge Sting fan. So I, I love Sting. He's one of my favorites ever. So we have some Sting represented over here with some Darby Allens on this. And then we have the full AEW commentary booth right here so we have the commentary team represented with everybody and then we have the ringside exclusive AEW commentator set which is also represented so i thought that was a nice way to cap off the shelf at the top and if we come just below that we do have the little sting shelf here we have the san diego comic-con exclusive AEW unrivaled sting here with the claw shirt just some other stings and then we have a men on card version of the sting 
to uh, pair with the Brody Lee. So that's why this is here, because the Brody Lee was here. So I figured why not pair the other one there, but a huge shout out to Jazzwares for helping me cop a second copy of that right there. So a huge shout out to them. This other shelf, we just have some men on card uh, tag team two packs, and then we have the little you know, title belts right here. So all the like all this is men on card, and I do believe we have every tag team a uh, little two-pack or what have you, but all of these are men on card here. They just really fit snug there. I, w I really wish there was a way to showcase these instead of just the bookshelf form, but I guess it's still uniform and looks clean. Over here, we just have a miscellaneous shelf of different figures here. Nowhere really else to put them, so I did want to represent some AEW stars here. Samoa Joe, Adam Cole, Danhausen. We also have the ringside exclusive hook and Danhausen up here as well. Coming below that, again, we have like some Dark Order and then just some Sammy Guevara. We have more tag team packs, men on card. Then we have uh, some hangmans. You got the young bucks back there as well. I need to get some more of the uh, the shelves right here that that are up here. That way you can actually see everybody. But you get the point of what we're going for. Then we have some MJFs, and then we also have uh, Death Triangle. Just some you know Penta and Ray Phoenix. And then we have my man Wardlow over here. You guys know I love Wardlow, so I got him down here by himself. Then we have more men on card figures. You have just some ringside exclusives and. Blood and guts and whatnot, so all of these are just random uh, men on card figures just down here. Because, again, I didn't have another place to put them. And I actually don't even have the space in here to really put all of my uh, men on card AEW figures. I have a whole room, actually, that is uh, that has a bunch of boxes stacked up. But this is a nice little AEW corner over here that I liked. I liked putting this right here because before I put this shelf here... This was completely blank, so I got to fill it up with some different AEW stuff. Now, if we come from the AEW corner over here, we do have the brand new built arena. Now, this is not completed because I do have to add the crowd signs and different stuff to it. It's not completely full there, but this is the brand new completely constructed arena. This is actually the old table, though. This is the same table that we had at the old room and office but it has been uh, sort of rebuilt, retextured a little bit there. So we did change it up a little bit, which we'll get into. But yeah, just showing off the crowd here, we have just a bunch of different basic figures and stuff. And I also got a brand new pop-up from Extreme Sets. This is the new, I think, 3.5 or something. So we did, uh, I bought two of those to run along the back wall. And then we also have like some fan stands here that we mixed in. And then uh, it, it just provides a lot of depth to the crowd, which I really like. So we did do that. Uh, just got some different figures all strut out through here. I like this scaffolding on these support beams. I think that really completes the look as well. And this lighting being over the top is so nice, man. It's just so great. I am going to add a couple lamps, obviously. But you remember when I used to have like 27 lamps right here to fully light up the whole thing? That was super annoying. So now I don't have to worry about that, which is great. Got the little timekeepers area. We got me and Brad there on commentary for MDT Live. And then we do have the uh, the My Damn Toys Live or MDT Live ring here. Been holding it down for a long time now, which is great. Shout out to the quality of these uh, ringside collectibles ropes and Nate who makes the custom ring skirts. Here we have like some different stuff. All this stuff's going to go in the crowd. So I thought these would work cool for little things to hold up from fans. You got a stack of different crowd signs to go in there that I haven't got up just yet. But I didn't want to delay the room tour anymore. So there's that. Huge shout out to Elite Wrestling Figs on Instagram for the ramp idea. This is actually like a gutter drain or something. And it works great. Now, this is where that silver spray paint comes in because I'm going to hit this ramp with it and uh, all this different stuff that we built the stage out of. Besides this, I'm going to put a green screen over. And then this is the Mattel Creations crowdfunding stage, the new Gen Arena one. I am going to, uh, I think, just put like a, I don't know, maybe an MDT logo over this. And then when it lights up, it'll look like the logo's coming through, I think, is what I'm going to do there. But I like the curtain and the simplicity of it. Nothing too crazy. But uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Maybe we'll make some changes to it. But uh, a lot of this has to be painted, so it's not ready yet, but uh, yeah, it's pretty close. But there's another panning shot of the arena. I, I like it. I think it's okay. It, it's pretty good. I think this is a 8-foot table by 4-foot, so it's 4-foot uh, coming this way like this in width and then 8 feet in length there. But underneath here, we just have different weapons. So you have weapons, tables, chairs, and ladders. Got some paints and tools and whatnot. We have uh, just some random junk accessories at the bottom there. And then uh, this is my women's figure drawer. No room on the wall right now to get the women's figures up, but this is completely full of women's figures. I got to get those, you know, up and running there because I do want a section for the women's figures. There's a custom Lita just for random assortment. But, uh, yeah, I do want to get those women's figures up there. There's a few on the shelf, but not many. And then I think in this drawer, it is headless. Besides this Undertaker, I think, this drawer's full of, like, any basics that are missing heads and other pieces. And I think this bottom one is just basics that are missing heads. And then one random Jax, Jeff Hardy or something. So basically, if I need more crowd members, I go in here and I pick it out and I make a crowd member and throw a shirt on there. 
But there's the arena. I'm pretty proud of the arena. I think it looks good. And then atop the arena on this balcony, we do have a complete Supreme Collection men on card set of the AEW Supreme. So you have Pinto, Ray Phoenix, you got CM Punk down there. Now I do have extras of certain ones, but this is just the ones that I have on display. But I thought they really, I don't know, they made for a clean look up across the top. And I really like the way the Supremes look men on card. So I really wanted to, you know, get a good shot of those viewing into the packaging. But we have Kenny Omega's there. We got the Britt Baker. Walmart Cody and then regular Cody and then at the end we have a random Logan Paul because I didn't have a place to put him but I like that figure it's a really nice top picks figure so yeah there's the top talents Logan Paul and he's got his prime bottle and he's just kind of chilling right there at the top right there as you overlook the arena so that's a pretty cool shot there and then uh, yeah I think that pretty much does it for this wall over here except for these figures so above the blacked out curtain window we do have the Bray Wyatt section missing some Bray Wyatt's obviously there's I don't have every single Bray Wyatt I think I used to I sold a bunch of them Back in the day, I think, to really start the channel and get like a, a little bit of a budget to, to kickstart the arena. So that's what we did there. But we have a bunch of Fiend figures and Bray Wyatt's little customs and fix-ups. And then we go into the Matt Hardy section, which is cool to pair these together. One of them is missing an arm. Now, you will see some figures throughout the video that are probably missing limbs or head sculpts and whatnot. But that usually means that either A, I'm, I'm waiting to get a certain head sculpt or I'm waiting to fix up the figure. So sometimes that happens. But... It is cool to have all the Matt Hardys up here together. I think they look pretty nice. In completing this wall, we do have the Shop AEW exclusives, and I have a full men on card set of these. So just kind of counting down, you have one, two, three, and four here with Mox and Sheeta. And then we do have MJF and Jade. And then we do have Adam Hangman Page or Hangman Adam Page. And then we finish it up with the hook figure here. And I think I have a second hook on the way. I, I think I have each one loose as well, if I'm not mistaken. But we're also waiting on the Eddie Kingston, which I think is number nine. That I guess will go down there until we get number 10. And Jamie Hayter, I don't think, has ever shipped either. So there's just the Shop AEW exclusives. I wanted to keep those together. I think they look pretty uniform. And then over here, you're probably wondering why this big old gap. Like, I could clearly hang shelves there and fit the rest of the figures on the wall. The women's figures, the Drew McIntyres and such. But... The reason I didn't put any figures there, I feel like I need to hang something there that covers the wall. Because if I wanted to get to those, I'd have to, like, you can't really get to that. And then when I reach over and I knock a figure down and it knocks down the arena, that would really piss me off. And then it, somebody said, "Get why don't you get one of those grabby claw reach things that you pick up trash with? What if I go to do that and then I domino them all and they all knock all this stuff over? So, I don't know, kind of a lose-lose, so I just left it blank. I think, you know, when in doubt, just just don't even try. But that pretty much wraps up the back wall with the arena on it. It is looking a bit bare right there, but I, I'm not too worried about it. Also, I have a plan for that in the future. So now that we have that wall covered, now we're getting into the giant wall of wall-to-wall -wall figures. We have these big shelves here. We got different stuff going on, but I guess we'll start with the floor and then we'll work our way. Uh, we'll, we'll cover these shelves and stuff and then we will do the wall itself here. But on the bottom, we do have this nice carpet rug here, or this rug, I should say, that I got from my mom. Huge shout out to my damn mom here. This is a Christmas present, so I thought it looked really clean. I love the pink on the background. It looks really clean. It's very, very soft. And one thing you may be wondering is why isn't it just chilling in the middle of the floor? And that's because I need my chair to be able to slide up and down in this arena right here. So I'm going to put down one of those office slidey things so that I can actually film and slide around. And I don't want to crush the rug, so that's the reason why. But from there, we do have a men on card section. So all of these Ultimate Editions and figures are all men on card outside of a couple. But I think, uh, I think maybe... Uh, some of these down here aren't men on card. I just filled the void with the boxes, but then the rest are men on card. So we just have some different Ultimate Editions, men on card, and, and different things like that. Coliseum Collection, San Diego Comic-Con Exclusives, different Brock Lesnar's. There's really no order to the madness. I just tried to keep the people that are together together, I guess. And then sometimes it breaks up, but they're not in any order whatsoever because I don't have a full men on card set. But I, you know, I'm slowly but surely knocking that out but we do have some different exclusives and things like that but yeah all of these are men on card and uh, i do have some other extras but those are in my closet over there which probably will do a closet tour but that will be patron exclusive to the patreon members so outside of all these men on card figures over here i did add some racks over here some different figures because i didn't have enough shelf space around the room so i did want to get into this but we just have some different batista figures here and there's not really a, a real method to the madness here when it gets into these you know, like certain superstars are together and random. So like Batista and Shinsuke Nakamura don't necessarily go together. But, you know, I just tried to uh, fill out the shelves here with some different figures I wanted to see. So we do have Bobby Lashley. Shinsuke goes into Bobby Lashley. You have like the new Ultimate there and some different figures. And then it goes into Bret Hart. 
which is a cool way. And then we have a little Shinsuke Nakamura armband right there. But so completing that, we do just have a little, you know, little spice rack shelf of figures right here. Then if we come across, we do have a full another spice rack shelf thing full of Undertaker. So we just have a bunch of Undertaker figures here. Just kind of showcasing the different looks of him. And again, I try to keep them in timeline order. There may be one or two out of sorts. I try my best to keep them in timeline order. Some are most definitely in timeline order, but then some I, I do uh, mess up on and stuff like that. But yeah, I can't wait to add the Elite 107 over here. And then we have a little Domes Chase, like clear Undertaker there. But we do have a little Spice Rack. And I, I like the Spice Racks. They're not terrible. I think they, you know, they get the job done. And they kind of accomplish the same I guess, goal is this, or the feet of this, where you can actually see the different figures, which is cool. You know, it's not covering every single one of them, so that's nice. But behind these Spice Rack figure shelves, we do have some Chase AEW. So on this right side of the MDT LED, you know, neon sign, we have the unmatched Chases, and I don't have every single one of them, but just kind of uh, keeping tabs on these. Some of these I found in the wild, some of these I bought on eBay, got in trades and whatnot, so we just have some random... Uh, Chase Unmatched Collection figures that we end with Brian Danielson over there. And then if we come on the other side of the Unmatched Chases, we have the Unrivaled Chases. And then we have uh, the Bunny, you got Moxley, and just some different Unrivaled figures. So you have the Unrivaled Gold Chases over here. And then on the other side, we have the Unmatched Silver. And the most, I guess the, the rarest of the ones is this Series 3 Darby Allen 1 of 500. And then we have the 1 of 5000 MJF. But when you stand back, you can't even F and see them because of the backstage right there. So that's kind of annoying. But you know what I'm saying? I had nowhere else to put them, so I figured that was a good spot to keep them all uniform. And then again, in the middle, we do have the MDT sign that's glowing right there, which I thought was awesome. That was another Christmas present, so I figured that had to go up in the room, which is really awesome. So a huge shout-out to my wife for that beautiful sign. I love that sign. It looks really good, and it glows really nicely, even in the dark. So yeah, if you cut the lights off, it looks kind of crazy in here, especially with all the different lighting and stuff like that going on. But yeah, there's the, uh, the glowing sign, and then you have the massive shelves of figures, but... Let's get into those. All right, man, so I guess we'll start off with the bottom shelf, and we'll work all the way, all the way across, and we'll just go back and forth. Like We'll just zigzag, I guess, but uh, or we'll just go left or right the whole time. Who the hell cares? Starting out over here, I'm a big Kevin Owens fan, so we do have just a bunch of different Kevin Owens figures represented. And again, just because a figure, if you see multiples of a certain figure or figures missing for that Kevin Owens, for example, or something like that, it's typically because either A, I head swapped it and didn't have a replacement, or it's for a future custom or something like that. And I didn't want to just throw it in a random bin or what have you. So we just have different customs and things of that nature. You'll see some different figures mixed in, some figures that are actual releases, some that are, again, custom made and whatnot. And we usually do all the customs ourselves. You will see some that were not made by me, but a lot of them, there's some defining moments there from the Fed. Then we have the little, uh, you know, the Austin mockery sort of figure there. And then uh, we go into the Sami Zayn's from the Kevin Owens figures. And from there, we do go into the Johnny Gargano's. And then you know I had to represent the trash. So we do have Trash Corbin here represented by the MDT sign. Huge shout out to my man Fig Skip for that custom Corbin. Now, on the other side of the MDT, we do have the Adam Coles. And uh, some of these have the correct fix-up formula, you know. Like some of them have the nice legs and whatnot, and some of them do not. So they're really, really short. But, yeah, you, you, you hate to see that. But I just feel like they always made Adam Cole way too damn small. But you can kind of mix together to make the right formula. But from Adam Cole, we do go into the rock figures. Again, rock figures. Dude, tons and tons of rock figures. You have ones that have different accessories and whatnot to really dress them up, make them different, you know, things of that nature. You have the new Ultimate Edition Legends rock. And then it just keeps on going. Different eras, again, try to keep it in timeline order. Again, probably some that are out of sorts, but for the most part, we do have a bunch of rock figures here. And then we end things up at the Hurricane. So I figured it'd be funny to put Hurricane and the rock together. So we do have Hurricane capping off this bottom shelf. And then going up one shelf, we do start off with the Seth Rollins figures. We have a ton of different ones represented, again, going from NXT. And then we go into the Elite 45 Rollins, which is one of my favorite figures Mattel's ever done. So we do have a bunch of different fix-ups and customs represented there. We have sort of a, a Slammy Award winner, his return there in 2016. You have SummerSlam. You have like a random like fantasy attire there. I think it was what, WrestleMania 34, I think, there in the gold gear, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, on into SummerSlam. And again, just uh, just different fix-ups, man. You'll see different head sculpts and different representations. You got the Elite 64 Rollins, the top talents in the Monday Night Rollins gear. And then uh, just a bunch of different looks for Rollins over the different years, man. So it's really cool to see these all up next to each other and things. And I hate it now because you have so many copies of Seth Rollins 
with the wrong formula. I wonder if I cut this light off, if it'll make a difference. All right, so I cut off the MDT sign so that uh, it wouldn't be so damn bright in here. Maybe that'll help with the exposure and whatnot. But you see a bunch of different Rollins here, and it kind of sucks because you have so many copies of a Rollins, and then they change the formula up, and it looks a whole lot better nowadays with the thicker legs and then, you know, the double-jointed arms and stuff. And so now a lot of these are outdated, but it's still really cool to see all these up next to each other and see the progression of the Rollins. Here's a bunch of fantasy gears. You have the Punisher. You have the Buzz Lightyear Rollins there. And then you kind of get up into modern day with the Hell in a Cell, the pink suited one. And then you have some modern. And then you do have the Ultimate Edition Rollins at the end. And then it takes us into the Cody Rhodes figures. Missing some of the earlier ones. I sold those off a, a while back to, uh, or actually I think I used a bunch of them to make Finn Balor customs. But then you go into the Unrivaled and the Supreme Cody Rhodes. And then after you get into the different suited figures, you do bring it back into Mattel. And after this Ultimate Warrior Elite, Cody right here, it gets us into the basic. And then we do have a bunch of just different elites for Cody Rhodes here with the top picks, the defining moments. And then we finish it off with the Ultimate Edition before getting into Brock Lesnar with his different figures. You have his Ruthless Aggression Ultimate Edition. Then you just have a bunch of different Lesners over the years, of course. And then you will see that we have a bunch of the Modern Day Ultimate Edition because I love that figure. So I do have like four of those or something like that. I love that figure. Then you have the Elite 99 Lesnar, the Chase. Then you have a couple Amazon 3-packs. I love Brock Lesnar, man. I like his figures a lot. They feel really good in hand. You have the Ultimate Editions specifically I like a lot. But I think he actually brought home the best Elite and Ultimate Edition of last year, if I'm not mistaken. Just a great year for Brock last year. Going up to the next shelf, we do have Finn Balor, so we do have a bunch of early Balors there. And again, uh, what I planned to do with these different fins here was to make the different colored trunks that he wore. And we did get a lot of them accomplished, but we never, you know, different priorities take over. So you move on to different projects and then you never come back to it. So we do have a bunch of custom battlers here. I remember making all of those. It was crazy. I, I would love to make some more of those. But now, again, with double jointed arms and such, it's like, what's the, it, it, I don't know. I guess that's just sort of the game that you're playing here when you get into action figure collecting and they re-release things and they make better versions and double jointed arms and things but you have fantasy gears you have updated gears you have you know different leather jackets looks and stuff like that there's that bane prince devitt right there which i like but it goes from this sort of promo gear here in the shorts like a training finn balor into the demon look so we have different demons here on the daniel bryan torso which i despise and then they get into the better ripped up torso so you have a bunch of takeover dallas you have the entrance greats in the two pack with aj styles you have the random Elite 98 where they went to giving him Daniel Bryan legs for some reason. So he's shorter than all the rest of them for some, just a, oh, what a terrible thing to do. Then we have some Ultimate Edition Balors. And then we take it into some just different custom demons we never officially got from Mattel, which look crazy. I'd love to get, you know, a full set of every demon ever he's ever done in WWE. And then you take it back into some older Prince Devitt looks. And all of these customs right here from the Joker on were made by Showstopper Custom Figs. Really, like, classic looks on the channel. Like, some figures and customs that have been here since the dawn of time of the channel, which is crazy to think. I think we started the channel back in early 2017, like January, I think. So, those customs have really stood the test of time. So, from Finn Balor, we do go into the Kenny Omega. So, we have a bunch of AEW unrivaled Kenny Omegas from Series 1 to the Ring to 1B. You have some different customs and fix-ups, GameStop exclusive. You have a random Bullet Club. And then you have the Unmatched Series 1, which is one of my favorite Jazzwares figures I've ever done. Then you have some different fix-ups and things. There's the Shop AW exclusive there behind the Blood and Guts. Then we have the Unmatched 5. You have the Hell's Gate sort of defining moments gear right there with his gun. Go check out that pay-per-view. And then you get into the Supremes, which I do have a lot of copies of the Supreme because I love that figure so much. It's just, it's probably one of my favorite action figures I think ever, wrestling action figures ever, was the Walmart exclusive and the regular edition of the Supreme. But then we go into the CM Punk section, which is cool. We have some different figures on there, different fix-ups and things. And I cannot wait for this section to expand. We're going to get so many different elites and ultimates re-released by Mattel. So cannot wait to get those, man. We do have some different fix-ups here. But I know in the Greatest Hits line, the Ultimate Edition line, the Legends line, Main line, Top Picks, they're going to pump CM Punk out a lot. So I can't wait for that. That is why you have this little section here. And I'm sure I'm going to have to move some stuff around. But... We do take it into the Chris Jericho section, which is kind of funny. I'm just now realizing putting the CM Punks up next to the Jerichos is, is a different, you know, just sort of a weird thing. But moving on, we do have different looks here from, uh, you know, early 2000s into the middle 2000s there. Love this, like, 05 version of Chris Jericho. Love that gear right there. Wish we would have gotten that officially from Mattel. But then you go on and on into the list Jericho, and then it gets from that into the Jazzwares versions. And we've had a lot of Jerichos from Jazzwares, so it works up all the way 
tons of <laughs> the Series 8 right there. Again, I didn't want to just throw them in a random pile, but may have to. With the expansion of the punks, I'm going to have to get rid of some of these repeats, put them in a box, and then uh, put the new punks out there. But then we have a couple of the Walmart exclusive at the end. And then uh, that takes us up to our next shelf, which again, we're going to start all the way over there and work our way across. And the next shelf we have is the Jeff Hardy's, which is a very fun guy to collect. One of my favorites ever as well. And this whole wall, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this wall is sort of full of just my favorite guys to collect. Even if they're not my favorite performers, which a lot of them are, they're my favorite guys to collect just because in terms of how maybe how toyetic they are, how awesome they are. But genuinely, uh, like Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, those are like my favorite guys in WWE right now and some of my like favorite current talent. But Jeff Hardy, I mean, who doesn't love Jeff Hardy? But growing up in the late 90s, early 2000s, Jeff Hardy has always been one of my guys. So I love Jeff Hardy and all of his figures are so toyetic between the different color sleeves and the face paints and the different fix-ups you can make. You do have a lot of Jeff Hardy figures from Mattel. And I'm really waiting on an AEW Jazzwares one. I know they're going to give us some cool ones. I'm hoping also maybe they'll give us like a Supreme Edition maybe one day. We'll have to see about that. But I am waiting patiently on a Jeff Hardy from AEW. Hopefully it won't be super out of scale. But then we get into some fantasy head paints or some face paints there. Some different customs. Uh, those were made by BEW. I did the rest of it. He just did the head sculpts, which are probably the best part. But then I did do that like clown face paint. I did this Punisher Jeff Hardy right here. And then uh, we also did a Willow together right there. Sort of a... A dual effort there which looks nice and then it goes into the rvds which we do have all the different rvd figures you got the ultimate and then you also have the unreleased chase edition there in the uh, white and red which looks really clean and then we do have some customs going on there into the kurt angle figures which are nice you have the ultimate edition which heavily disappointed me but hopefully we'll get another redo of those so we got some kurt angle figures on into stone cold steve austin or just steve austin here and uh, I kind of keep it together. You got like the jeans looks into the camo pants, into the jorts looks with different t-shirts and stuff. Really wish we could get like a, I know we got the Then Now Forever Together set, which is this middle one right here. But I don't know, that figure really disappointed me. I'd like to see a nice formula, a new formula for not only an Ultimate Edition Stone Cold, but just some different jorts and stuff, man. There's just so many looks they have not touched on Austin. And uh, there's just so many that they could do, but it goes on into the Ghostbusters. But there is the Stone Cold Steve Austin section. We do finish this row up with the Shawn Michaels. We have Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels, a bunch of different looks there for customs and whatnot into the Amazon exclusive Fan Takeover Ultimate Edition, the Defining Moments, a couple Greatest Hits figures, another ringside exclusive fix up there. And then we do have some other looks of Shawn Michaels with the updated arms and such. And then we have an Elite 3 that's looking the opposite way, but... Shawn Michaels, man, so many, I remember complaining that we never got Ruthless Aggression Shawns and Long Pants Shawns, and then it seemed like last year, year before, man, they started pumping out a lot of them, so I'm not done yet, I want some more of those, but Shawn Michaels, really fun guy to collect as well, but we're moving up to the next shelf, and with our next shelf, we are getting into the Randy Ortons, and uh, we have some legend killer, you know, evolution, early years of WWE Randy Ortons that morph into, you know, the Viper, and that evil sadistic side of Randy Orton, some different trunks, colors, and whatnot, then you do have like some different custom head sculpts and things like that. I'm trying to get the right zoom in and like see which, you know, I want you to get a good look at them, but I don't want to move too, too fast. But there are some Randy Orton's and then we move all the way up to sort of modern day up here. Uh, a bunch of different torso swaps and stuff on some old trunks. And then we do get into the Ultimate Edition at the end there. So a lot of Randy Orton's, really fun guy to collect, even if it is just trunks colors. They just look awesome up next to each other. And I'm also a really big Randy Orton guy, so I like that. So from Randy Orton, we do go into the Tribal Chief slash Big Dog, and we get into the Roman Reigns section, which, I don't know, man, I feel like Roman Reigns figures, you know, it used to just be kind of a best color change, and now we get a lot of Romans, but it doesn't really change anything, but sort of what, the gauntlet color, and then it gets into, you know, different t-shirts and stuff, which we'll get into in a moment, but this is sort of the Big Dog era right here, different vest colors and things and fix-ups. So you have all your different Roman Reigns figures, and then it works up into, that's like kind of a custom Ultimate Edition there with the gold gauntlet, sort of just fix that up randomly. And then over here, we do get into the Tribal Chief era. And in the Tribal Chief era, we get some really awesome ones, like different, you know, you can just really fix up figures, man, with different head sculpts. You can put them in these track suits. Huge shout out to PWR Lucha for the different clothes, accessories, and also my man Gio. Huge shout out, shout out to Giovanni Parga for the custom cloth goods that we have going on right here. But uh, you have the Undisputed Championship, the new Ultimate Edition Roman. We have an all-white custom Roman here. Uh, different Bloodline Romans from the pig fed back in the day before he kind of turned into that evil assassin that we see on WWE television. But different gauntlets and different custom looks and fantasy looks that you see here. But I don't know, man. Just really sweet. You can fix this guy up and do a lot of cool stuff. 
Still waiting on a head sculpt that looks like this, though, with the man bun and the fade and the thick beard. Would love to see something like that officially from Mattel, but it is cool to see, you know, all the different Roman Reigns figures. And from Roman Reigns, we do go into the Uso. So we have a bunch of different Uso figures right here, Elite 54 into Elite 64. And then we have, like, sort of when they, you know, went their separate ways, and then it comes back together, or just that one J figure, really. And then the Elite 95 Jimmy, I think I turned to a custom, but... We did bring it back together. We have a bunch of fix-up Usos here, just mixing together different parts and stuff to make different looks of the Usos together. So it goes from like the SummerSlam top picks looks into the Elite 106. And then from here, we do get into the Kane section, which I would love to see a lot more Kane figures. And I'm definitely missing a few Elites for sure. But again, kind of getting in timeline order. And then we do have, again, some of these are on roster shelves, so you have to remember that. So, you know, they don't get all the full looks. But left a little space there because, you know, more Romans and Usos are coming for sure. And then at the top, man, we did save the best for last. You guys know the GOAT. We got John Cena up here. And this is pretty much in timeline order, kind of the debut or start of his WWE career. And it goes all the way down, all of his different looks, all the way to the end of the wall. Now, I do have a ridiculous, absurd goal of uh, my John Cena collections, but this is just the start of it. I have plenty. Of, you'll see at the end of the line why uh, I have so many John Cenas, but we'll, we'll get into that later. But you do kind of have debut Cena into, you know, the start of the Dr. Thugonomics, into the word life, into different stuff. You got the Ruck Fools look with the U.S. Spinner, into the Chain Gang era where he captured the WWE Championship at WrestleMania, and then it goes on. And again, man, it's just different looks and things, really like the uh, the baseball jersey, the Chain Gang football and baseball jerseys, as well as the uh, basket. That's just, just the, my favorite looks right here. Very nostalgic. These are some gears I'd love to see from Mattel, but we do just have some custom fix-up and ultimate editions here. Just of uh, some different Cena eras and stuff like that going through like 2006 on into 2007. I, again, man, we really need some more of these. I'd love to get a new ultimate edition Cena with some different armbands to make new fix-ups and stuff. But you go from 07 into 08 into 09 into the early 10s. And then, of course, you do, like, have his uh, quote-unquote fruity pebble. And now, some of these are defining moments. Like, right here, it's when he won the Tag Team Championship, and then it just goes into his different shirt colors and releases. You have the uh, breast cancer awareness attires and all his different shirts that he rocked. Kind of shadowy up here because uh, I'm kind of blocking the lights a little bit, so I hope it's not too bad to see. But, again, man, it's just kind of, again, a timeline order of all the different Cena shirts and looks that he's worn over the years. And then uh, you kind of get into, into modern day when they're not as common, right? So uh, I'd say this ends probably like right here at the Fast and the Furious Cena. But uh, there are some other customs and things I'm working on, which we'll get into down here. But uh, these are, you got the Ghostbusters, and then you have the top picks. Elite 95, you have the ringside exclusive, the You Can't Stop Me gear. Need the hat and shirt for that one. I mean, there's different, look. I still don't have the G.I. Joe gear. I don't have, I mean, it's not perfect. It doesn't have every single one, but for the most part, it does have all the ones that Mattel has released. And then a bunch of uh, custom ones that they've yet to give us. But after the Ghostbusters one, you kind of get into like this movie era. So you have John Triton here from the Marine. You have Lance Catamaran from Southpaw Regional Wrestling. You have the MDT Champ is Here uh, version of John Cena when he was MDT Champion. Then you have this really cool uh, gifted uh, Cena here in MDT custom colors from a man Steinzenberg or Cody. And I did put my custom jersey on there, so it kind of makes a cool look. Then you have Super Cena, and then all of these Cenas here are just some like random fantasy attire fix ups, just using different figures. And they're just kind of extras that are awaiting to be turned into fix ups or customs with shirts and hats that will eventually be put into the timeline order here. So that's what this is here. And you have a ton of like Elite 100 Cena, and then you have a ton of the Ultimate Edition Cena, and then you have a few of the like prototype John Cena's just for future customization. But I wanted this whole top shelf to be Cena, so I just went ahead and left it. So that was the full massive wall over here. So we have uh, completed almost every single side of the room, man. We are going into the final wall over here, which is really cool. I like this wall a lot as well, but uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Starting out over here, we do have my replica WWE Spinner Championship that is autographed by Jeff Hardy when I met him back in 2017, I think. We also have an Elite 100 poster that I got WrestleMania weekend from Jonathan Bartlett, I think it was, is the one that did the artwork on that, which looks awesome. Don't like the wave, but the artwork is absolutely badass, so I did want to put that up there. I like how it looks framed up on the wall. We'll get into the shelves in just a moment, but I do want to take you guys through this like backstage area that we have set up here. So I did uh, construct this backstage area. You got like some garbage cans. Over here, we do have our catering area. Um, this is our interview area. You got the, the Vindication Money in the Bank briefcase over here. And then I'm actually going to paint over that villain's poster and put some sort of graphic. I have no idea what the hell I'm going to do yet. Maybe like 
an MDT and Vindication logo or kind of a mixture. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm definitely going to paint over that. And then I'll probably hang a sign here and a sign over there. Just kind of capture it up. But we do have like a zebra print carpet, a little monitor. And then we do have like the, the area, kind of like a gorilla position. Not really. I know it doesn't really look like a gorilla position. But this is where the superstars walk out of the curtain to get to the arena over here. You have a little monitor with some different contracts and whatnot. You got a little clipboard. You got some microphones, camera, computer system, you know, monitors and whatnot. And then uh, we also have like this little setup in the corner, which is just the health area, right? You got like stretchers and wheelchairs and different things going on here. It's kind of the doctor's area or the medical area. You have the locker room and then you just have like some different, it's, it's pretty much just set up like a backstage area, right? Just kind of random for you to get like the cool shots backstage. Uh, you have like a little sitting area and whatnot for people to wait on their matches and what have you, have meetings and whatnot. Then you have a little area to eat. You could either eat up here, you know, and go get some food and drink and whatnot. And then there's the exit doors. And I don't know, it's just sort of a, a makeshift backstage area. I've always kind of had a backstage makeshift area. So I wanted to construct one here on the table. So this will just be an open area to, to film or do whatever. And if you go into the locker room, we actually do have a locker room set up in here. And the cool thing about that is I have made it where... I can kind of just, if I remove this, it takes this whole wall with it, so I can get in there. I'm not going to do it now because I would have to slide this away and stuff, but it's pretty easily accessible, all things considered. But back here, you have like a couch, some lockers, some bags and whatnot, just a little locker room area. And also, I could film it from this way. If I uh, remove this, I could also get in there. So, you know, I try to make it easily accessible because I don't want to move a lot of stuff around. And then coming in here, we do have the... GM's office, which a lot of time has been spent, we have added and updated it a little bit here, but going in here through the door, it does say office, and you come through here, and you got like the PickFed championships on display with the posters, little draft poster, those are old as hell, we have a little shelving with some different books and stuff, and you have the GM's desk with the computer and different stuff going on, I don't know whose ashes are over there, but it just looks like a vase, you know, if you want to, you know, buy into the illusion. But here's the GM's office. Uh, you know, I have some I have some different plans for this. I have a hole in the wall. Real ones know what that's from. And then from there, it goes into the review station, which does have, like, some different lamps set up and stuff like that. This is where I typically, you know, film my reviews and anything backstage, you know, any videos we film that aren't toy hunts and whatnot, we do film those back here. And then over here, we do have Elite 107 that is yet to be ranked. That'll be a My Damn Thoughts episode. And then all these figures here are usually figures that I'm going to, I'm waiting to unbox or review. So we do have uh, Legends Hulk Hogan, need to get the rest of the wave. We have the Legends Ultimate Warrior figure that I'm reviewing. And then we have a Chase Hook figure that I think I'm just going to open and put on the uh, AEW shelf over there. So we'll see about that. Then you just have some wheelchairs and stuff. This is actually for action figure surgery. This is the stretcher we use for surgery and then the wheelchairs for the thumbnails and whatnot that we do in surgery. This is actually my second phone that I do thumbnails on because it takes better photos than my phone for some reason. I don't know. But then we have my little notebook where I jot down all my ideas and creative and, you know, just different planning. That's my planner, sort of. And then up here, I actually added this new. So any figures or little pieces I put on this area right here is going to be pre-surgery. So if I have an idea for surgery, I'm going to put the figures and pieces right here immediately. So then when I come back and look right here, I remember what uh, what I was going to do on action figure surgery. So that's this this little new uh, this little new piece I've added here. Underneath the backstage area, we do have like some different stuff. So this is like ring accessories. You have like head sculpts and interchangeable parts and different hands and heads and hats and just random stuff in here. They are assorted in their own bags. And in here, same thing. You have Ultimate Edition heads and hands and different accessories. Same thing down here. This is the John Cena shelf committed only to John Cena figures, elites, future fix-ups. You have a drawer full of elites that are like flashback, and then you have a drawer full of more modern day talent. Of course, these couldn't fit on shelves, so that's why they're in these in these drawers or what have you. And then last but not least, we can get into the last wall here. Now, this is a huge gift from my brother. Huge shout out to my brother who has his own YouTube channel who reviews figures, Crypt Toys. You can check him out. I'll put a link in the description below. But he made me this massive MDT sign. I figured it was a good centerpiece for the wall here that we have shelves coming off of. So I thought that was pretty nice. But I appreciate him. Love him. So go check him out. But starting on the bottom shelf, we do have the Cedric Alexanders. Again, don't want I want these out so I can like turn them into... like We desperately need an updated Cedric Alexander. I mean, I think that goes without saying... But then it goes into the Ultimate Warriors here. Bunch of different Warriors. Don't have all of them, but it is cool to see all of them. Very colorful part right here. That's kind of the reason I wanted him and Rey Mysterio here. Because they really, I don't know, it's just very colorful, right? So you have a bunch of colors going on around the logo. But 
from Ultimate Warrior. It does go into the edges. We have some customs and fix-ups and stuff going on here, torso swaps and just different fix-ups and things like that. You know, that's kind of where we live with my collection. If I get a figure, I most likely am going to change it unless it just came perfect. I just like to fix up figures and make my own Frankenstein efforts. So from the Edge collection, it does feed into the current roster section. So we have the Ultimate Edition Asuka, and then it just has like uh, a lot of modern roster guys right here. Some of them will be replaced, so we will be doing all that. But we have, you know, Judgment Day. You have Logan Paul with the U.S. title. And if you're not on the current roster shelf, you're probably within reach. You know what I mean? Like Bronson Reed doesn't have his own Bronson Reed section, so he goes in the main roster or current roster section. Then I can grab him easily because it's in front of the filming area. And then we end this off with an autograph from John Cena. So I have that framed autograph from John Cena right there. And then up there, we do have the Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley section. And again, some of this is just random. You know, it doesn't really have a method to the madness, but it goes into the blood and guts and different stuff. That one of the yellow trunks, I plan on making like some cloth goods, like an elite version of John Moxley. So that's the plan there. But yeah, you have the different Dean Ambroses and John Moxleys. From there, it does feed into the Rowdy Roddy Piper section, which is kind of a smaller section. And then it goes into the Rey Mysterios. We have so many different Rey Mysterios, man, just tons and tons. But we do have a lot of colorful gears here, so that is, I don't know, I just feel like it clashes well with the, the pink background sign, and he's short, so it wouldn't, you know, cover up the wooden sign in the middle. That's the reason why Rey Mysterio is also right here, but we have a bunch of different Rey Mysterio figures, of course, not the last ones. We're going to get plenty more, I'm sure, and I, I mean, I'm going to run out of room, so any duplicates that we have up here will have to be I guess shafted, I guess you could say, because I'm going to have to make room for more new figures that come out. I really love that Macho Man Top Talents Rey Mysterio Elite, and then we finish up the section with the Eddie Guerreros, which look really cool, and then we get into the Ricochets, which I also like to collect. I'm missing one or two, I think. Yeah, no, one's on the current roster shelf, and then one is the Network Spotlight that I never purchased. Then from Ricochet, we go up into the AJ Styles, which the Ultimate Edition and the Elite 104 are definitely my favorite versions of AJ Styles figures. And uh, I would love one day to have somebody just get the Elite 104 torso and arms and just fix up every single one of these AJ Styles because I used to despise collecting his figures because I knew how inaccurate they were. I just hated the Daniel Bryan torso. Didn't look good. A lot of his head sculpts were kind of whack. But if you take these gears and put the Elite 104 torso and head sculpts and, you know, fix these guys up, they look really damn good. So I would I would love to do that one day. It's just not... A high priority for me but that is definitely something i would love to do but yeah the elite 104 and the ultimate edition aj styles are a gift and across there we did put our truth right here just a small section i didn't have a huge amount of figures here so i figured this was a good spot for it and then we go into the hulk hogan section and one of those is like a horror themed one it's kind of getting stabbed there from our horror action figure setups but plenty of hogan's coming i know that this section is going to have to absolutely move we have the new hogan three pack here with some different figures and stuff we're going to have to Definitely move this section because we have more, I think there's like four more Hogans that at least we know of coming, and then there's even more than that, I think. So we have all of our Hulk Hogans here, you know, just different Ultimate Editions and fix-ups and stuff, and I don't know, they look really good up on a shelf next to each other, so we have plenty of those. And then we do have this Then Now Forever Together poster that I got at San Diego Comic-Con that I put up there, which is a nice framing, and it looks good, I guess, to go on the other side of the Elite 100 poster, so that was my thinking behind that. And then finishing it up, last year at the Royal Rumble, which I'm going to the Royal Rumble this year. If you guys are going to the 2024 Royal Rumble, hit me up. I'll definitely be there in Tampa. So uh, I got this last year at the Royal Rumble. So I guess this year I'll try to get another men on card autograph figure. And I guess I'll put that there. But uh, I wanted to pick that up. I love RVD. I love the Elite 91 RVD. So I figured, you know, buy that figure. I, I love that Elite 91 Tiger Stripes RVD. So I wanted to get that autographed and men on card. So Maybe I'll make that a yearly tradition. Go to the Royal Rumble, buy a men on card autograph figure. But at the top, we finally finish off our top shelf with uh, some different Alistair slash Malachi Black figures. You get this like custom white gear, and then it goes into Macho Man, which again, man, I know they don't really have anything to do with each other, but I figured, uh, you know, they're colorful and they could go together. So we do have Macho Man going up. I didn't mean they're colorful. I just meant Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior, and those are colorful, so... They kind of look good over here on this wall, so we do have different Macho Man figures. And then we get into the Triple H section, which we have a lot of duplicates and stuff like that for different Trunks designs. But I feel like it's been a while since we've gotten a mainline Triple H. It's at Elite 73 was the last time we saw a Trunks version of, of Triple H, if I'm not mistaken. So it's definitely been a minute since we got a Triple H. We have a bunch of like modern day Triple H's, so in this case, they are like reversing order. So we work down, and then you get into... Uh, you know, when he had his long hair, you got the handlebar mustache ultimate, and then you go back to like 05, 04, 
2003, you got different trunks, colors, and things of that nature. 2002, Return There, which I really love. A custom painted head sculpt. I think that's a Jack's head sculpt that's repainted. And then we have like uh, like 2001, 2000s versions of Triple H there. Another custom painted head sculpt there, which I think looks damn good. And then we do have the Legends, and then it works backwards. And then we keep going and going until we get into Hunter Hearst Helmsley at the beginning there. And again, lots of repeat figures here, but yeah, just future uh, customs that we can do here on the channel. Then the last shelf that we have here is on top of the door here as you enter. And we have Nicholas, we have Leo Rush, Cassius Ono, a bunch of just different random figures. Ringside exclusive Walter, we got Kurt Hawkins, Velveteen Dream, Andre the Giant, and just some random figures. Mustafa Ali, and then it goes into Alexander Wolf. So just, yeah, just a kind of a random shelf of sort of modern day, a mix of old and new, just some cool figures that I wanted to keep on display. And that takes us back to the door where we originally started, man. So that is pretty much the entire room in its entirety, man. Now, this is not my full collection. I do have some other stuff here. We'll go into the bathroom. And this bathroom right here connects to a closet that has a lot of figures in it. Again, that'll be a patron exclusive video that goes up soon. And then through here is a shower and toilet. And then right here, I do have uh, one of my daughter's towels. That's nice. But then we do have my fodder hands. So this is where I keep all my interchangeable hands. Glove, you know, different uh, Jeff Hardy, just different versions of different hands here. You have a Roman Reigns section. You have the 30th Raw Anniversary Target Exclusive 3-Pack Letters. And then we do have the Minimum Card Trouble Cheese versus Beast Incarnate 3-Pack Amazon Exclusive. Some different random stuff here. Got Santa Claus and Storm Collectibles Hogan. And then we do have the Target Exclusive 3-Pack Hulkamania 40th Anniversary set over here. And this actually was a mirror, but I covered it up because I don't like mirrors. So I put up this RKO blanket because why not? Randy Orton, man. And we also have, this is a really cool thing here. Now, I do believe they've done an updated version of this, but this is Fig Heels Ultimate Wrestling Figure Checklist, and it has, like, every single figure in it from different uh, toy lines. So go check out his channel, Fig Heel. Huge shout-out to my boy there. Really cool channel, an awesome collection, and he did make this book. And he has an updated version that has even more figures in it that you can check out that has, like, every main line. It has independent lines in it. AEW, Mattel, Jazzwares, Elites, all that stuff, man. You can keep up with your collection in this book, so huge shout out to him there, but I keep mine secure with this Hogan 3-pack, so we do have that there. And I don't know, man, I feel like I'm either going to put shelves up here, or I'm just going to line this wall with different random figures, I guess, but I have a shish ton of stuff in that closet that I'd like to display. But as you come out of the bathroom, you do have all of this stuff to your right, and then you have the arena here. Now, I originally almost had the arena like come out here, but I didn't want to get hip-checked as I came out of the bathroom. But yeah, man, that is pretty much the entire 2024 room tour, man. Uh, I It's honestly bittersweet because I had a ton of fun building the room, but it was super just strenuous. I don't know if you guys remember. I, I don't even know how many updates you got, but this entire floor was covered with boxes and boxes of stuff. And to have it look like this, man, is honestly ridiculous after it all came together. But I am... Pretty happy with it. At this juncture, I think I'm pretty happy with the results that we have here. The lighting looks awesome. I'm finally glad not to have so many shadows, something that existed in the old office. Glad to finally have the arena back, which I think looks great. It's not completely done. We have to fix up the stage a little, but I think, it, you know, for the most part, it's pretty much done. But a huge thank you to everyone that checked out the channel this year, man. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I know this is a long one, man. I mean, it's got to be damn near an hour video or something like that. So I hope you guys do just buckle up and enjoy the ride there. But Huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Love each and every one of you guys. This None of this would be possible without you guys' support and everything you guys do for me on a monthly basis. Thank you to everybody who's liked, watched, commented, man. You guys are absolutely amazing. But here is to an incredible 2024, and I hope everybody has a blessed year and a blessed new year, man. I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later.